Hello, hello, it is Wednesday, February 3rd. We're halfway there. Oh, to start off, I ask you to calculate each product and simplify when you can. That means if your answer is not in simplest form, write it in simplest form. So we saw earlier this week that when you are multiplying fractions, we use the area model so you can see the visual, but we learned that the standard algorithm is we can multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and simplify. That will get us to our answer. So for a number one, one times three is three, two times eight is 16, and there's not a number other than one that goes into three and 16, so that is set, that's simplest form. Number two, three times two is six, four times three is 12. Now with this one, I should not leave it as six twelfths, right? Six is the largest number that divides into both of those. Sorry. So if you divide them both by six, divide by six, divide by six, six divided by six is one and 12 divided by six is two. So you of course should have one half for number two. All right, for number three, multiply across the top. Five times one is five. Six times three is 18. And there is not a number other than one that goes into both of those. So that one is all set. For number four, one times one is one. Nine times nine is 81. That is simplest form. Number five, two times five is 10, and five times nine is 45. And right away I see that this ends in zero and this ends in five, so I know that five goes into both of those. I'm gonna divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same amount, because that creates an equivalent fraction. It just makes a simpler one. And 10 divided by five is two, and 45 divided by five is nine. So two ninths is what you should have. Don't leave it as 10 45ths, switch it to two ninths. All right, and number six, seven times three is 21. Eight times seven is 56. Now 21 and 56 are both multiples of seven. So I know that at least seven will go into both of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide that by seven and this by seven. 21 divided by seven is three and 56 divided by seven is eight. So three eighths is what you should have. Now for number seven, it says to solve problem number one, this one half times three eighths, using a visual model, because we do have to understand this visual model. So let's do that. If I wanna take half of three eighths, that means the first thing I need to do is put three eighths on here. That means I need to cut this up into eight pieces. So, there's four on that side, and four on that side, and I want three eighths. So one, two, and three. Okay, now I want to show a half because it's half of three eighths on the other side. So I'm gonna split this whole thing in half. And one half would mean one of these pieces would be shaded. So that means that one half of three eighths is gonna be this section right here because I only want the half of the three eighths part. So this doesn't mean much to my answer, neither does this. And now we can actually see the three sixteenths because there are three pieces shaded out of two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. There's your visual for it. Okay, now a blast from the past, which is gonna help us with lessons coming soon. I ask you to write each mixed number as an improper fraction. So I have three and two fifths. And remember, if I have three and two fifths, one whole would be five fifths, right? So if, if you have three holes, that would mean five fifths, five fifths, five fifths. And we figured out that you could just do five times a three, which is 15, and add your two extra pieces, which is 17 fifths. And again, if you're like, I just still don't understand Mrs. Trombley, if it's three and two fifths, one whole is five fifths, right? So that means if you have three, that you have five fifths plus another five fifths plus another five fifths. So there's your one, two, three. Plus you have this extra two fifths. So for my final answer, I'm adding up, I have a common denominator that stays five, 10, 15, 16, 17. So the shortcut way to get this is just, you know that you're gonna have this five three times. So just do five times three and add that extra two. Okay, number nine. So I'm gonna have nine ninths seven times. That means I can do nine times seven, which is 63, plus one is 64. 
ninths. For number 10, I'm going to have 10 twice. So 10 times 2 is 20, plus that extra 9 would be 29 tenths. And if you want to list this out, if that's helpful, then go for it. I just want you to be able to, to come up with this answer. It's not my way or the highway. Okay, now we're going to do the opposite, and you're supposed to write each improper fraction as a mixed number. So I'm basically going to try to figure out, well, how many four-fourths are there in 43? And we can just look at that as how many whole amounts can I fit in there. So I can do 43 divided by 4. I know that 4 times 10 is 40, so I can fit 10 fours into 43. And to get from 40 to 43, that is 3 extra. So 10 and 3 fourths, remember your denominator never changes. And now you can check your work by doing this. 4 times 10 is 40 plus 3 is 43 fourths. All right, for 5 fourths, I know I can fit one group of 4 fourths out of this. And then I have one extra out of 4. And again, think about it this way. I can fit 4 fourths and then I have one extra fourth and that would make... 5 fourths, and within this, I have 4 fourths, which is 1, and 1 fourth left over. And with this, I could have done 4 fourths plus 4 fourths plus 4 fourths 10 times. For number 13, I can count up from 8 to 79, and I know that 8 times 9 is 72, and 8 times 10 is 80. So it's going to have to be 9. So to get from 72 to 79... How much is left? Seven eighths. So nine and seven eighths is what you should have for that. All right, you are all set. See you soon.